So first off, we have here the Judgment card, and the Judgment card signifies new beginnings, contact, communication, a lot of like the fog lifting, and I want to say like emotional clarity as, you know, this is a love relationship spread. So I do feel kind of like um, communication coming through. We have here an earth sign. So this is the Queen of Pentacles. This showed up earlier in the previous reading. And this is a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Um, I feel like for many of you, this is contact coming through from this person and it might be they are not as financially stable as they seem. So for example, if you're in a relationship with them and they're making promises, oh, let's move in together, let's buy a house, let's purchase property, let's blend our families together. I feel like they're at a point where they might be rescinding some of the, like taking back some of these promises, or they're not at a point where they're stable enough to follow through with these promises for you. But either way, there is going to be talk and communication and discussions about what is the next steps that you both need to take and whether or not I do feel there is serious reassessment happening between the two of you and you might come into the conclusion that the person was not as reliable and as you know committed as you initially thought so you might reassess whether or not you want to commit more of your time of your resources of your emotions into this relationship in the past we have here the Eight of Pentacles, as well as the Temperance card. The Temperance card, this is a card about patience. This is a card about, you know, mastery, doing something very, very diligently, even though it might not, it, even though it might not like, um, it, it can seem very tedious and it can seem very restrictive. So we also have here the Eight of Pentacles. So I feel like for many of you in the recent past, even when you you when you were in relationships okay and i feel many of you you're not ones to give up relationships easily so if there's a, a problem in a relationship you sit down and you talk to your partner tempers might flare at it's understandable at the beginning but you are also very diligent about sitting down hearing your partner's point of view hearing you know and, and then saying what is on your mind and coming to a conclusion and especially talking about things so that you can understand where your partner is coming from. So I feel like you do give people the benefit of the doubt. You want to hear both sides of the story before you can even make up your mind. And what I'm sensing is this is a process that you have done over and over and over and over again. And at this point, you're just like, I'm tired. This person is not giving me, you know, that total commitment or this person is still undecided. They're still testing the waters. They're still, you know, temperature taking. And so you might feel like you want to withdraw your, you know, your, you want to withdraw your love and your affection because you just feel like it's not really going anywhere. It's not going to you know, fast enough in the manner that you'd hope. And also the other person might be distracted with many, many other options or they're distracted with their work and they're not making the proper time for you. And I do feel an element here about somebody working too much, somebody being like a slave to money, somebody who is neglecting their emotional relationships as a result of work obligations, work finance money obligations. If you are dealing with a Sagittarius, they're not the best this is the card of Sagittarius, the temperance card. They're not the best at time management. So I feel like giving them a little bit of slack or leeway is going to be helpful for you, mainly because, you know, they tend to overestimate the amount of time that they have. So they're always showing up late or they always make promises. And, and when they can't follow through, it's not because they're malintentioned. It's just they overestimate the time that they have, the resources at their disposal, and they make promises that they realistically cannot follow through. So it's more like done in the spur of the moment without thinking about the long-term longevity of it, okay? And so I'm also sensing many of you have been dating around, like, you know, this is kind of like dating, uh, looking at profiles, looking at all the, you know, sending out pieces of yourself. So... I'm sensing you might have gone through, you know, for those who are newly single, you might have feel, felt a little bit jaded, like going through the motions of dating 
and then you feel like finally you've landed somebody might be an earth sign and then you feel like they're not as committed and so you're back to square one and it can feel a little bit frustrating okay so i'm gonna move this closer so you can see the cards better at the center of the spread ten of wands this is moving away from a situation in the reverse position it's just basically dropping a very very heavy load a burdensome relationship and moving on the death card is very very final it's a major arcana card and it basically means not looking back and if you are in a position where you were dealing with especially earth sign taurus virgo capricorn i do feel many of you are just like this is too much for me there might be some issues as well some of you are dealing with a partner that might have dependency issues over drinking you know in particular because of the temperance card and so you don't want to get dragged down with their lifestyle and you're feeling like this is relationship if i stay in it any further it is going to destabilize me financially and emotionally. So you're protecting yourself and you're trying to move past it. What you're really thinking about here, we have the Eight of Wands, which is a lot more offers, a lot more options, a lot more people that you can connect with. And you assessing all of the options that are on the table for you. It's like they're, the options are presented, but you're thinking heavily about, you know, the great love, the, the mind-blowing, the life-changing relationship partner that ought to be in the picture for you. And for whatever reason, you're doing the dating, but no one is really, you know, 100% making the cut. And so I do feel that for many of you, you're forced to move on from a relationship partner that you still really greatly care about. I'm seeing Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I'm also seeing that um, Sagittarius energy, okay? Moving forward into the future position, there is going to be communication. There is going to be contact. And the Ten of Swords is a situation that's like at the end of its cycle, but it's making a comeback. So when something is at an end of the cycle, it means it's basically not meant for you anymore. And so if you purposely, consciously go back to it, you're stuck in that cycle. It's a feedback loop, like an endless negative feedback loop. And so I would warn you, there is contact communication coming from a person that you really care about. They're not at a point in their lives where they can give you what you want. And so if you re-engage with this energy, I feel like you have a very big choice here. You can re-engage if you can keep it very platonic. But on the other hand, if you're re-engaging and you're hoping and praying that things are going to get better, I do feel that you're better off going with new choices, new options on the table for you. So to summarize, we have an earth sign coming back into the picture. And this is a person that is not ready to be in a relationship with you. They're not going to give you what you want. They might want to, but I feel like external circumstances are really getting in the way of them being able to give you that commitment. And so if you're initiating contact, just be aware of that. If you're hoping for other things to come into the picture, let other things come into the picture. And I'm also sensing as well, honestly, Libras, I feel like many of you are single and you're dating and you thought dating, you know, was going to be like very, very prosperous. It's like you, you would think that there were plenty of fishes in the sea, right? And so you would think that the right person would be in the picture right now. And while there are a lot of options, none of them are really, you know, exceptional. But at the same time, I feel like relationships are always a two-way street so what you get out is what you're putting in so i feel like some of you need to not judge things too harshly or judge people too prematurely and let them you know um, cultivate the friendship and the relationship with them because i feel like you might prematurely cross somebody off your list even without giving them a second chance or even without giving them a chance and then you're wondering, like, why can't I have, you know, that love that I used to have with my ex? And so they're saying people are all different. So we need to, you know, approach love and relationships with a little bit more of an open mind so that we can connect with new people, so that we can kind of um, allow new people to come into the picture. So I feel like you're better off waiting for new options 
rather than re-engaging with the past because you feel like you're not making the traction in the success in the new dating life, okay? So with the center of the spread, we have the death card. It's urging you to move on. It's urging you drop whatever burden has been problematic. Drop whatever relationship has been very burdensome for you because it was very destabilizing. You need it to heal from relationships right now. You need to heal from it before you can achieve a partner that is right for you. 